Welcome to the second episode of Shane Talks 99. This week we are looking at January 22nd of 1999. And full disclosure, this is honestly probably the worst week of releases in 1999. It's going to be a pretty quick and short episode. Uh, both movies we have to talk about are, are ones that never really stood out to me. One I hated, one I just kind of liked. Um, well, we're going to talk about them, but uh, it's January uh, January is kind of where Hollywood just dumps a bunch of crap. Um, it's a little bit different in 99 because last week we got to talk about, well, three kind of crap movies that were obviously dumped in 99, but they threw in a teenage, you know, badass movie called Varsity Blues. Next week, we get another teenage movie that we're going to talk about called She's All That. Uh, so between the two of those in this January week of uh, January 22nd, we got, a, we got two kind of blah movies. Uh, the first one is a Sharon Stone film called Gloria that we're going to talk about really quick. Um, the second one was actually a 1998 British comedy drama, I guess, uh, but it did not see release in the United States until 1999, so that's why I'm including it on this list. Uh, it's called Still Crazy. So both of these movies, Gloria and Still Crazy, they were not even included in this book, which is one of my favorite books I've read recently. Um, Brian Rafferty, a uh, guy wrote the book right here. Uh, my buddy Troy told me about this book a long time ago because he knows that I'm obviously hugely obsessed with 1999. He told me uh, about a book that had been written about somebody who had all the same feelings that I did. Unfortunately, I had forgotten about it for a couple of years and then um, I don't even remember how this popped up. I think it popped up on my Amazon list or something like that. Somehow I came back into the knowledge that this book existed. I immediately bought it, immediately read it. Absolutely loved it. I literally could have written this book. Uh, Ryan Rafferty and I, we share a lot of the same feelings about a lot of the movies uh, that were released in 99. Uh, the book is called Best Movie Year Ever. Uh, how 1999 blew up the big screen. Uh, his stuff is kind of divided up a little bit differently than the way I'm doing this podcast as I'm doing these like chronologically the weeks that they were released. He kind of grouped them together more by like the movies that um, that went well together, I guess, or whatnot. Like, uh, let's see if I can find. Um, chapter five is Varsity Blues, She's All That, Cruel Intentions, 10 Things I Hate About You and American Pie all together and all obviously months and weeks apart um but yeah still a great read still an awesome book highly recommend it um yeah it I, it literally every word that's in there could have come out of my mouth because it's the same way that i feel about those movies so super happy that he wrote that book super happy you have read it wanted to promote it real quick uh because uh like i said neither one of these movies gloria or still crazy they didn't even make his book so yeah, that's how that's how not memorable both of them are. Um, so real quick, uh, I'm going to grab a drink real quick. Um, we're going to start off with the movie Gloria, which has a terrible Rotten Tomatoes rating of 14 percent uh, with an audience score of 30 percent, which I feel is like really high for what this movie should be should get. So Sharon Stone plays Gloria. Movie starts when she gets out of jail. She's been in there for three years. She took the fall for her boyfriend. I don't remember what it was. That's how unmemorable it is. Apparently, he promised her a lot of money to, to admit to doing something so that he didn't go to jail. So she gets out. She goes. She tries to collect this money. He's not having it. He's kind of a dick. Uh, Jeremy Northam is the, is the character, or is the actor that plays the character. He, um, if I remember right, it's the same dude from The Net, the uh, the Adam, or not Adam, uh, Sandra Bullock film uh, in 1994. Uh, but so Jeremy Northam refuses to give her any money. Um, there's a subplot that goes on where uh, the accountant for this mob group of people that, that they're all involved with, uh, his family gets gunned down and, and murdered because he's trying to like steal money from them or something. But the the little like 10 year old boy survives uh, very much like the professional, you know, family gets executed, but little boy manages to survive. He ends up at Jeremy Northam's apartment or house or uh, I'm pretty sure it's an apartment, but at his place with Sharon Stone. Um, and then it kind of the rest of the movie becomes what I consider the not funny version of Big Daddy. Um she doesn't like kids, she you know treats the kid like shit, she tries to dish the kid a couple of times. Throughout the course of the movie, they develop, you know, 
feelings, not like romantic feelings, but like an emotional attachment to each other. Um, and, you know, he changes her mind about kids and all this kind of crap. And um, I still don't even remember how the movie ends. Uh, so I can't spoil that for you. Um, I don't remember much about the movie. I, I mean, it was pretty terrible. Um, so like I said, it has a, it has a 14% uh, for the critics, which is where I would put it very, very bad. Uh, 30% from the audience reactions, which again, I, I honestly don't even know if I know anybody else who's seen this movie. Um, it, it, I remember the box art for it, or the poster slash box art for it, just because obviously it came out when I worked at the theater and it's like, it's like Sharon Stone, like in a hooker's outfit, essentially. Um, yeah just not that memorable not that great i and when i went and saw the movie i kind of had hopes for it because i'm you know it i was in my youth a pretty big sharon stone fan um because i was a teenage boy and because movies like basic instinct and sliver had come out um or assassins um yeah because because of that i i, I really wanted to like sharon stone's movie and i just couldn't because it was just so bad uh, the next movie that we're going to talk about is is the British one. Um, it's called Still Crazy, and I remember liking it but not loving it. And also, when, I, when I'm a little fuzzy on it because I'm pretty sure I saw this at Castleton Arts. I don't think it played at the theater I worked at. I think I had to go to our sister theater, which was the art house in town, um, to watch it. And it's it seems like something that they would have played, but I also can't guarantee that it was, that it was January 22nd of 99 that I saw it. They may have gotten it later than that. Um, so I don't hundred percent remember, but I'm, I'm almost certain I saw this movie at Castleton Arts. Um, it is a British comedy drama and it's actually got a pretty amazing cast. Uh, it was probably my first introduction to Bill Nye. Uh, this would have been a couple of years before love actually. Um, so Whereas he played the awesome character of Billy Mack in Love Actually, he played another lead singer in this one, um, not as memorable as Billy Mack. Uh, Billy Connolly is one of my favorite actors from growing up because I was a huge Head of the Class fan. And even though he only did the last season of Head of the Class, like, he always stuck out to me. And then, you know, obviously he was involved in, oh, Norman Reedus and Sean Patrick Flannery's um, movie that everybody loves that I don't. I am so drawing a blank on it. I can see the Boondock Saints. Uh, so obviously Billy Connolly has a small part in the first Boondock Saints and then a much larger part in the in the sequel. Um, so Billy Connolly, awesome actor, uh, so much so much fun as a person. And he plays the roadie in this movie. So he gets, he gets a lot of good little parts that I remember him in, in this movie. Stephen Ray and Timothy Spall are also members of this band. Uh, and then the two other band members are guys that I that I don't recognize, um, even though I do try to lot, watch a lot of British stuff. Uh, the two of them just not not I can't even remember their names. But um, so the movie focuses on a band called Strange Fruit in 1997. Uh, they were playing a concert and everything fell apart and it ends up being their last show. Um, 20 years later. Uh, a mysterious guy comes around and is trying to reunite the band to have them do one last show at the same venue where their where their 1977 show was. Um, the movie then goes into kind of a let's try to get all of our uh, band back together. Uh, one of the groupies, essentially the Penny Lane of this story, uh, gets involved helping trying to bring all the characters back together. Um, I think. I think when I went and saw it, I wanted a lot more and not, I wanted, I didn't want it exactly to be, uh, this is Spinal Tap. Like I didn't, I didn't want another mockumentary type thing like that, but I still feel like I kind of wanted something a little fun. I don't remember this one being as funny as I was hoping and expecting it to be. Um, just because, like I said, I kind of was expecting something in the vein of like a, a realistic version of, of Spinal Tap. I still do remember laughing some, just not as much as not as much as I wanted or hoped for. Um, obviously, a couple of years after this came out, we would get almost famous. And so looking back 23 years later, I kind of see it as a, as a melding of those two s concepts kind of together. Um, and yeah, so it... <laughs> It was a good attempt. It it 
was enjoyable. Like I said, I didn't hate the movie, but I also don't remember it being like, oh my God, I want to watch this all the time. Um, I attempted this week to go back and try to find it streaming somewhere so that I could watch it and get it fresh in my memory. Because on last week's episode, I said I should probably do that. Um, both of these movies, Gloria and this one I looked up, I would have watched either one of them, um, but I wasn't willing to pay for them because I don't remember either of them being something that like really demanded me you know, paying and spending my time to rewatch it. If I'd been able to do it for free, I, I gladly would have, and and that would have been fun. Um, the movie was nominated for for a Golden Globe for Best Musical or Comedy, um, so it obviously wasn't crap. Like, and again, not not having gone back and watched it, I don't have a lot of stuff fresh in my mind about it, but I just remember it being okay. And like I said, this week, January twenty second of nineteen ninety nine just kind of a real blah week. January, really bad month. Um, we're going to have a lot better stuff coming up pretty much. Uh, I, I've looked ahead through February. There's at least something I liked and cared about every week in February. So those those episodes are going to be a lot more fun for me to talk about uh, the movies that I really enjoy and like. Um, specifically next week, next week, we, as I said, we have She's All That, which is Paul Walker's second movie in 1999, both released in January. So Unfortunately, those are the only two movies he did in 1999, uh, so we're, get, we're getting our Paul Walker fix out of the way right at the beginning of, of this series, but still looking forward to um, the amazing amount of stuff I've got to talk about with She's All That. So, uh, well, uh, last thing, I thought I put it on my notes somewhere. Uh, still Crazy ended up with a 73% on Rotten Tomatoes from the critics, uh, which is probably where I would put it from what I remember. Uh, and then the audience score was a much higher, not much higher, but a higher score at 84%. So um, still definitely a movie that someday if I come across it, I'll definitely give it another shot, have different expectations of it than I did back then. But uh, yeah, so like I said, this is most likely going to be the worst episode of this entire series that's going on for the rest of the year. Um, but thanks for listening to it. And like I said, next uh, week's episode will be She's All That. And I'm really excited about that one.